I'd like to do two examples where we calculate the total distance traveled, or another way to say that is the arc length. Um, in this case, we will do one that's given in vector form. So for t and 0 to pi, this function p of t gives us the location of our particle at each time. Okay, it has three components. We are in R3. And then the next example, I will have a function y is f of x, and we compute arc length. Well, here we know we integrate 0 to pi of the magnitude or length of velocity. This here, this is the speed, right? This is a number. We integrate this 0 to pi, and we get the total distance traveled by this particle. The first thing we need to do is calculate the velocity. Well, we differentiate each component. So the first component, we get 3 cosine of 3t. Then we get minus 3 sine of 3t. And then the third component, we get, um, let's see, 3t to the 1 half. This is our velocity function, and now we calculate the length, or magnitude. This is going to give us the speed. We take a square root. We take each component squared and add them up. It's the length in Euclidean space, or a magnitude of the vector. This will be 9 sine squared, 3 t. And then when we square the last term, we get a 9. Oh, well, t to the 1 half squared is just t. Okay? And then from the, well, I can pull out a 9 from all of these. Maybe I will just do it from the first because I'm going to use the fact that cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. And here we have, this is the square root of 9 plus 9t. Oh, okay, wonderful. I can actually do one more thing. <laughs> because if I pull a 9 outside the square root, I get this. Okay, now this is something we know how to integrate. The integral of 0 to pi of the speed dt equals, well, it's an integral, 0 to pi of 3 square root 1 plus t dt. And I know this integral. This is a 1 half power, so I add a power, divide by the higher power, evaluated between 0 and pi, and now, okay, when I invert multiply, I get, maybe I'll do it in two steps. This will simplify to just two, but I'll leave it like this for now. And then I have pi plus one to the three halves minus one to the three halves. And my final answer I will put here, the threes cancel, I get two pi plus 1 to the 3 halves minus 1. This is the length of the curve, or total distance traveled on this interval. Here's my second example, and we want the arc length, which means if you start at the curve at 1 comma, uh, let's see, f of 1 is 13 twelfths, if we start at 1 comma f of 1 and we walk until we get to 2 comma f of 2, walking along the curve, how far have you walked? This is the arc length. Okay, well, we know the formula. It is this, the integral, 1 to 2. The square root of 1 plus the derivative squared dx. This formula, if you forget, it really comes from the last problem we did because, so this is a little aside, 
we can think about this curve as being motion in space with the following position, um, t, f of t, and then the velocity would be 1 f prime of t, and the length of the velocity, which is our speed, would be exactly the square root 1 plus the derivative squared, right? So this formula that we use for arc length comes from what we just did in the last problem. Okay, so now to get to this problem. Well, what we want to do is first calculate 1 plus the derivative squared, then simplify, and then we will take a square root. Okay, so we're going to, you know, typically integrating something like this would be difficult unless you can simplify what's under the square root. So that's what we're going to work on. If we have 1 plus the derivative squared, this would be 1 plus, okay, now I differentiate. Here, when you bring down the power, this becomes a fourth, and then we have an x squared. This is an x to the minus 1, so when we differentiate, we get like this, all quantity squared. This problem, we will see a trick, okay, that comes up every so often in problems like this. If you see it once, hopefully we can see the trick again. But the first thing I'm going to do is, okay. This is a product of two terms I can multiply. First, outer, inner, last. The first is 1 over 16, x to the fourth. Now, this times this represents both the outer and the inner, and let's see what it is. Well, if you multiply this times this, you get a negative 1 fourth, right? So negative 1 fourth is the two outers, and negative 1 fourth is the inners, okay? which means outer and inner together add to negative one-half. Okay, you can check over here if you do not believe me. One-fourth x squared. And then multiply like this. Now you see, here's the outers. We get negative a fourth. And the inners... These two, we get another negative a fourth, right? So we add outer and inner, negative a half. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. The, the last thing I need is the last. So I multiply these two or this one to itself and I get one over x to the fourth. Okay, you have one minus a half becomes plus a half. So we're left with this plus one half plus one over x to the fourth. Now comes sort of the, the thought, the logic, or as I refer to, the trick. Here, we had the same, we had this same first term, the same last term, and with a minus a half, and it was equal to this squared with a negative, okay? So if you replace this minus with a plus one half, it will be, equal to what we see in the parentheses except with a plus squared. And you could check it if you wanted to. The first still gives you this, the last still gives you this, but now the outer and the inner are each one fourth and they add to this square root one plus the derivative squared dx. I've already here, simplified 1 plus the derivative squared. This is 1 to 2. The square root of 1 over 4x squared plus 1 over x squared squared dx. And we can then, what's underneath the square root is always, or I should say inside of the squared is always non-negative, so the square root will just be this.
Now this is something I'm prepared to integrate. I can integrate as I'm used to. We add a power, divide by the higher power. Here, this is a negative two power, so I would add a power, divide by the higher power, like this. Maybe I'll do that one in two steps. Evaluated from one to two. Um, this is, well, I'll do it here. This is 1 over 12 x cubed minus 1 over x. And we get, so 2 cubed is 8. Then we subtract a half minus, well, we evaluate at 1. This is a 12. Uh, minus 1. So we're left with, let's see, 7 over 12. This is minus a half plus 1 would be plus a half. That's the same as 6 over 12. We get 13 over 12. And this would be the arc length between 1 and 2, oops, for this function.